What's going on, everybody? We're back. It's your friend Will. This is the memory lapse, and we're gonna check out this uh, is a deck that we found in the 5 0 deck dump for Magic Online recently that looks like an adaptation of the Viren uh, Arc Light Phoenix deck that has completely taken out the Phoenixes, moving to Mizzet main, so it's an even more controlling shell. Uh, <clears throat> well, no, maybe that's not a fair assessment. I mean, it, it looks like it's more controlling because the win condition really is Niv Mizzet or these Drakes that have to attack without haste. Also, like a main deck in Trancing Melody. But it certainly is appears to be high velocity um, for a control deck. It's got four chart and four discovery without any way to reduce the cost. There's no goblin in here at all. And then three spe spell pierce and three dive down as a very cheap uh, methods of, or just very cheap options to protect an early Drake. So we're going to give this a shot. It looks really cool. And it, it kind of looks a little bit like, <clears throat> in some ways, the Adrian Sullivan list that had some main deck dive downs, but was not as all in on protecting. So let's play this in competitive play just to make sure that it looks like reasonable first. That Bant control deck that you may have just noticed there is pretty spicy as well. It's basically like a blue-white Teferi deck that splashes green for Carnage Tyrant. Like two Carnage Tyrants in the main or three in the main. And uh, some some green-based sideboard stuff like you get Knight of Autumn. Actually, it's like pretty spicy. We might have to try that one soon too, but this looks really good. Or this looks fun. I've really liked these various flavors of Drake deck. So this looks good to me. <clears throat> Shock to interact, search, dive down and Drake. I have to imagine this is one of the better hands this deck can present. The search helps us feed the graveyard for Enigma Drake. Ooh, blue black. So, under no pressure here, get searched down. Thief of Sanity, that's going to eat a shock. Seems like shock's going to be pretty good against their deck, so let's keep this. And since we don't even want to jam the Enigma Drake this turn anyways, because we want to wait until dive down. This deck certainly rates to have a lot of removal in it, <clears throat> based on the color combination they're in. Plague Crafter. All right, so I guess we'll discard a shock here. play a shock on the Plague Crafter. Library that opt. And play Enigma Drake and let's hope they don't have another Plague Crafter. I think we're hoping that they play like Chupacabra here and then we dive down and just start beating for four. Yeah. I'll put the trigger on the stack. Niv Mizzet. I think we're graveyarding, so we're pretty far away from casting it. And we need land. And we need more dive downs. Oh, see, I already made a mistake. I should have opted first main. But let's take this. And this way we're a little bit insulated from a Plague Crafter. We can actually flip the search here. Which is nice. Uh... <clears throat> I guess we'll library that, transform, and use this to set up. I 
think both of these are good. I think, yeah, I think we're just in the market for playing another Drake this turn. And then these are lethal next turn. Actually, the Drake's just cracked away there. Uh, so dive down is going to be very good in this matchup. Honestly, I expect a lot of our stuff will be good in this matchup. A lot of the sideboard stuff. Shock clearly seems better than Lava Coil, but we didn't see that much from them. Looks like Shock just hits everything in their deck, though. So I could even see adding, like, the Ship and Fires over the Lava Coils. Beacon Bolt seems good. The Planeswalkers seem good against a potentially controlling deck. But I don't think we need to change it too much, honestly. Maybe the Entrancing Melody comes out. And the question is, is it better put in Sarkin, Rao, Niv Nizit, Karn, or like Counterspell? I'm just going to go with the Rao. That seems like it does the most. Because they do have a lot of creatures, so Sarkin. Coming down, it's not necessarily amazing. All right, we're on the draw here. We need blue. But we have a shock to protect us from <clears throat> a uh, thief, which is really the scariest card that they presented. Looks like our opponent's missing a land drop. So I think we'll just shock here and discovery. I think we want both. We'll keep the Crackling Drake on top just in case they have anything like uh, any kind of hand disruption on turn two here. Hmm. I think the question is whether or not charting is good <clears throat> in this deck. I think it's just going to be good, considering we have the dive down. And the spell pierce now. Let's, let's discard Enigma Drake. And we'll opt at the end of their turn, and, or we'll use the shock if they play something really scary. All right. Mm, yeah, I think we're looking for land. All right, so we'll just do a Nigma Drake with Dive Down and Spell Pierce back up. And then next turn we can add Crackling Drake with the same. Thought Erasure. I think we'll just Spell Pierce it, and then they can't take our Crackling Drake. And we'll grow our Nigma Drake in the process. And they're just going to scoop it up. Their deck was missing. They were missing a lot of land drops there, so I don't blame them. All right. Well, let's just go again. Do another warm-up. 
I'd like having all these one mana pieces of uh, interaction. It almost feels like you're playing, um, playing the Curious Obsession deck, <clears throat> except you're much less all in. Was this the same player we were just playing against? I wasn't paying attention. But for some reason, the name felt familiar. So this looks like a hand where we're going to turn to chart just to dig. Uh, could be the same. No, I don't think they played that kind of island. Hmm. All right, so let's just chart. And I guess we're discarding land here. Got one Electromancer. That is a good Lava Coil target. <clears throat> we know how important that card is to this type of deck. The difference between them playing maybe one spell next turn and three spells is that Goblin. Alright, so they have a Modest Enigma Drake. I think we're happy enough to play, play a Crackling Drake of our own. Eh, no, I guess we do need to wait with this deck, don't we? Instead, I think we should Discovery for a piece of removal then. Like this Lava Coil. Both these are quite good. Considering that they may be on a list that's also running like a bunch of main deck lava coils, it's better to wait until we have dive down protection. Because then we can just ride this to victory between this and Rao. All right. So they're spending their turn cycling, which is really good for us. I mean, I honestly wonder. No, I guess the fastest way to win is to get Crackling Drake down. And then next turn, like if they have their own Drake, we can row and minus to kill it. <clears throat> I still leave up dive down. Mm, I probably should have used spell pierce here. To be honest, the dive down is like more absolute, and that was an opportunity to actually use the spell pierce, but it was the same effect. Uh, hmm. Well, I think we're definitely going to want the extra Lava Coil. Probably don't want the Entrancing Melody. I don't think we want the Shocks as good as they are against the, the uh, Goblin. This could be a matchup where we want... Like, I think we want Beacon Bolt. Shiv and Fire is interesting because it kicks to kill Drakes. So it definitely seems better than Shock. And then do we add in Nimizit or another Planeswalker? I think we're on the I think we're on the control side here. So I'm, I would think to add in this Nimizit or this Rao because it can kill a Drake. As long as everything we do kills a drake, we should be pretty good. So let's try it like this. I can see a lot of those other cards being candidates to come in as well, like the, the third Nymizit, 
Um, the disdainful strokes. Disdainful strokes kind of narrow though. Really only counters their four drop Drake. So maybe that's not something that we want. Hmm. I mean, with opt, do we keep this? It's, seems pretty good as far as one landers go. All right, we'll get another shot in our draw step. If we miss, we'll just opt again. And if we miss here, it just wasn't faded. Yeah. Sometimes you see a lot of cards and you're not going to get there. So what are we discarding? I guess we're discarding Rao because we're so far away from him. Uh. No land in the top five it was a little rough. No land in the top six. Hmm. We need to keep this removal. All right, if it's just not gonna give us land, then we're just gonna concede. I don't think that was actually a bad keep. Like, if there's only one land in the top 15, yeah, it's a bad keep. And that was the scenario that we had, but we had to double opt. So it seemed fine. This gives us another chance to look at our sideboard. Like fight with fire is another card that could come in. But this seems more for the white decks that might be packing like bigger angels and stuff. I don't know. I like everything. Maybe it's like search too slow. I feel like we are supposed to be the control deck here. I don't think there's a situation where we're bringing out the drakes. Unless we're also bringing out the dive down to spell pierces. So let's just run it back and hope that we get dealt two lands. All right, well, this is the opposite of two lands. Continuing the theme this week of just mole getting into oblivion. This hand is really bad, but we have to keep it, unfortunately, because I just don't think we can go to five. But Beacon Bolt is not a removal spell. Opt helps get it to removal spell status. Oh, I expect we're going to get run over this game. Um, I guess we, it's worth opting for Spell Pierce to counter this Firemind's Research. Nope. We can also try to race it. Yikes. Yeah. Oh, looks like we're going to get run over. We have perfect mana, though. Chart and Shiv and Fire. So let's take the Shiv and Fire. And do we want the chart, though? <clears throat> I think we might rather have the chart in the graveyard. I think our plan from, from moving forward is Beacon, Bolt, and Rao. Which means tapping off a route next turn. And should have been firing this here. Unfortunately, Fire Mind's research can go to Planeswalkers as well. So busto. Did 
though they have to remove five counters. Hmm. So I guess the question is, do we Rowl and Minus? Do we Beacon Bolt? Or do we just Rowl and Plus? And keep drawing and let them... I don't think we can let them keep the Electromancer. Alright. I'm just going to Rowl and Minus. And hope that they didn't leave Shock in. Crackling Drake we can handle. All right. Dive down looks good here. Mm. <clears throat> if they have dive down of their own, the best thing to do is just play our own Crackling Drake, right? And protect it with Dive Down. Rather than go for the Beacon Bolt. Alright. Charter Course Resolves. You know, I think if they end up spending five counters eventually to nuke this, if we've gotten several activations out of it, we're going to be okay with that exchange. Especially if it clears the way for Nip Mizzet. All right, so let's learn from last time, and let's use the Spell Pierce here. Save the dive down. This spell pierce back, that's awkward. All right, cool. This is great. And I think we're blocking. Enigma Drake is a great draw here. Because now they have to decide between nuking the Drake or nuking the Planeswalker. Which means they're spending their turn to do that, right? They're gonna they have to play a spell and then pay two mana. So they don't have um and you know, I guess I, at this point we want them to do that because then it unlocks and it misses it to come down and they have to build five counters back up to kill it. All right, looks like they're just going to play the spell. And I'm guessing they're just going to remove counters. <clears throat> well, we didn't get run over here. I don't know what the long-term implications of this are, but Nip Mizzet seems like it'll be a hell of a card in a turn or two with one more land to protect it. I have to imagine they're taking the, the Rowl off the board here, right? We, we've gotten a minus and two pluses off of it, so we, it's done its work. Wow, they're targeting Enigma Drake. I guess I'll just dive down then, since I can counter it that way. That's an interesting one. I wonder why they chose that rather than the Rowl.
just doing this to build back up. Oh, they have that. they got this. Okay. Hmm. Another dive down. Looks pretty tasty here. Niv Mizzet with dive down protection looks pretty tasty. I mean, attacking looks really good too. Yeah, I guess we're going to win this one. They need quite a miracle with this Firemines research moving forward. I think it was a mistake for them to uh, point it at the Drake. They needed to point it at the Rowl. I couldn't interact with it then. Yeah, that's fine. I don't want to do anything to put the Niv Visit at risk. Because we're just going to win with this card easily. <clears throat> Yeah. Where's the shot going? Yeah, they're just dead. It doesn't matter. Yeah, well that's it for this. 2-0, I definitely like the way this deck plays. Uh, it kind of plays like a fish deck, it's really interesting. So I think we'll try this one next in uh, Competitive Constructed. And then we'll probably try to start something new on the channel, which is I want to explore um, best of one again, but from a standpoint of a new-ish player trying to build uh, a deck that consistently get four wins on a budget. So I think that's that's something. It'll just be a different flavor of videos for at least a couple episodes. So look forward to that, and look forward to this Drake deck. It's really cool. And uh, yeah, that's it for this one. So stay tuned for more videos soon, as usual.